welcome into the conversation and our Super Rugby Coaches pre-season special. I'm Ricky Swinnell, Joey Wheeler, and we are rolling through the Super Rugby Coaches, and we're a pleasure to have the Hurricanes coach, Jason Holland, with us. Welcome in. Now, we've decided between us that we think you are the most under the radar of the Hurricanes, co of the, sorry, of the Super Coaches, and that you probably like that. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, <laughs> don't mind that. It's... Uh... Yeah, you can easily be under the radar with some of the boys, like one of the fellows you probably just had. So, no, it's, uh, no, it's good. Yeah, happy there. Happy right under the radar. Perfect. Tell me a little bit about Jason Holland, the person. Like, we obviously, we know sort of a little bit about Razor Ray, as you um, alluded to earlier, and probably some of these other bigger personalities. But you yourself, like, what, what makes you tick and, and who, who is Jason Holland? Yeah, look, I've, um, I suppose that's changed over the years. Um, Learned a lot, went away to Ireland for you know 13 years. We meant to go for six months, went for 13 years and probably changed a bit as the young fella that uh, a lot of the boys knew leaving. Um, had a pretty pretty uh, interesting background through varsity and, and had a good time and went away and sort of started to understand life a little bit and understand what makes people tick and, and you know, obviously my love of footy and, and now you've got a real interest in, in understanding people and, and what makes people tick has been... Um, something that I've grown over the last 10 years and uh, now have a real desire just to help people out and, and make sure that I can uh, do what I can to help people get what they want, really. So, um, yeah, look, mate, I've got a good good young family who have, well, they're not young anymore, who have supported me the whole way with two young girls who are now 17 and 13 um, and a wife who, who gets footy. So it's been... Um, That's good. That been, helps, doesn't it? Oh, massive, massive. Just understands it. Took, took a few years to understand it. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I think... She, yeah. Is she Irish? No, no, actually, yeah. went over with me. Oh, nice. So, um, yeah. Well, I bet she bleeds the root of Munster, though. Yeah, oh, yeah, shit, yeah. 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 Uh, the Munster stuff is, uh, yeah, you don't you don't get rid of that pretty too easily. So, uh, yeah, she'll sing the fields of Earth and Rye and all those <laughs> things don't go hard. So. And what, drop a Guinness on uh, St. Yeah, Paddy's yeah, Day, no just, worries. Just the glass these days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the girls were born over in Ireland? Uh, they... One of them was, yeah. yeah. One, of the, one we came home for a year in the middle when she was born here, but... All got Irish passports, and uh, we were actually booked to go back. So uh, during the middle of COVID, because oh. we hadn't been back for seven years, and the girls were pumped about going back. But uh, uh, we'll find time. It's all good. Talk to me about that Munster experience, because that obviously um, had a lot to do with your rugby career, firstly, mm. and then your coaching career. But how did that all come about? And you know, Munster, a, a, well, a world-renowned club, must have been um, an amazing experience. Yeah, like funnily enough, I. I uh, got pretty grumpy not getting selected at Super Footy in the Canes, and um, looking back, I didn't deserve to. I was, didn't quite get how to get your body in good nick and those sorts of things. So went over there for a six month with a mate who was going to coach a, game, a club game of uh, club team of footy, and uh, ended up playing for six months and got a month to contract there. So um, spent till 2005 playing, and then ended up coaching over there. But yeah, mate, the experiences you have over there with the people, and they know how to live life over there, even though. Um, you know, the weather's poor and those sorts of things, but they know how to put a smile on everybody's face, you know, and the way they support the footy is something unbelievable. So, yeah, really fond memories of playing and coaching and got some awesome mates over there, which I'm um, still dying to get back and see. In terms of that um, Munster experience, you obviously had a, a good friend, I think, uh, Alex uh, Foley, was it? Sorry, Anthony Foley. Anthony Foley, sorry. Yep. Um, and he obviously passed away um, a couple of years back. And how, how, did, how did that relationship sort of... Um, direct your coaching sort of career, your coaching path. What what did he have? What was his involvement in that? Yeah, look, it was interesting. We played together. He was eight, and and I was playing ten or twelve. And sort of, I suppose, in my last few years at Munster, we sort of were part of the drivers of that team, and so we had some pretty good conversations. Um, watching X go into his coaching career and be under the pump at Munster was a good one for me to sit back and watch and see if I could help from the other side of the world, but throw a few things at him. It was good for me to see that and sort of understand that two sides of the coin and you've got to trust your process and get good people around you and all those sorts of things. But, um, yeah, he was, a, he was a legend in Munster, so obviously she still is. And, um, yeah, no, it's... Um, yeah, we're pretty tight, but he's uh, he's taught me some good lessons around around how to live his life, how you live your life, and, um, and also some of the experiences he had when he started coaching. I've sort of looked on and gone, should I got a fair idea how it would handle some of those. We saw recently 
the All Blacks when Diego Maradona died, passed, laid down the All Black jersey, and the Māori All Blacks did something very similar when Anthony Foley passed. Did that sort of bring a, a bit of lump, lump to the throat, to remembering that occasion that was driving rain, and, but it was an um, um, incredibly poignant thing that the Māori yeah, All Blacks did for a mate of yours? Yeah, one of the daughters, uh, my daughters actually like, didn't they? Didn't, uh the Maldives do that for mm. Axel, but yeah, I was actually at that game, went over, I was over there for a bit of PD and got to that game, it was in the rain and at, at uh, Toman, but uh, yeah, it was, well, it's a good touch, eh? you, those sort of touches, you can't beat them. In terms of Munster for you, is that still there, a little bit of passion burning there to maybe someday go back and, and do a bit more? Uh, never say never, yeah. never say never. Um, as I said, I still got a hell of a lot of good mates over there, you know, people who helped us look after our kids and boys that sort of blood, sweat and tears for 12 or 13 years with them. So uh, never say never, but um, at the same token, I, I'm loving the footy here. It's been, um, you know, it was a ple it's been a pleasure to come back in the, just the slightly different mindsets that we have over here around playing, which suit me like I... I battle to go over there and have a massive kicking game or a massive <laughs> one off one off yeah. game. I'd battle to coach that. So um yeah, we're not. Who knows? Who knows? We'll see what happens. Why did you come back? I think you got came back about twenty twelve and as you said, 13, 14 years over there. So why did you yeah. why did you look, come home? Look, we were wonder, starting to wonder if it was time to get the kids home. Um and then Razor actually rang me. That was the first gig I came back to. He gave me a ring and said, Do you want to come back and coach Canterbury with me? So yeah, it was a pretty good opportunity and, um, you know, a couple of good learnings, a couple of good years with Razor and um, seeing what makes him tick. And uh, then the opportunity came up at the Canes and so I could take a little bit of what I learnt from Munster and a little bit of what I learnt from Canterbury and, and put my touch on it in the Canes. On that, Razor's obviously... Um, I don't know how you describe it. Uh-oh, that. hang on. Um, <laughs> very, easy, yeah, 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 easy. I won't, uh, yeah, I won't do that, but... Like, what did you take from, from learning beside him into your coaching philosophy now? From, you know, obviously every coach takes a bit from everyone else, but yep. Razor in particular, because he's obviously been so successful in his coaching career, but yep. what, what, did, what did you learn? I'd say it's a pretty obvious answer, but when I was, you know, as a player and then as a coach in my early days, all I worried about was the footy. And I was, mate, get the detail right and how are we going to do this? Yep. And every minute of my day was around the rugby. And so when I got a bit of a shock when, you know, Half the time we had together was spent on how we're going to create the environment and the culture and all that sort of thing. Yeah. So that was a bit of an eye opener for me. And that, um, yeah, as I say, I was just rugby, 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 and didn't get the whole big picture around, um, you know, as I said, helping bringing people, a team together. That's right, bringing the team together, yeah. helping people be the best they can be, setting up environments and a the little bit of theming and stuff that goes on. So um, yeah, that was that was the, the biggest learning, like the footy was, you know, I was pretty confident that I you know, could slot in and add with the footy, but no, I, I learned a lot around around the environment stuff. I suppose now that you, you got the job sort of <laughs> thrown at you last yeah, year, yeah. and now you've got, you've had a bit more time with this team going into 2021, mm. what, what, what do you want to change in that sort of Hurricanes environment? You've lost um, your skipper as well, yeah. and TJ, like, is there... It's probably a good time in many respects for, for maybe new beginnings or whatever it is. Yeah, that's the way you got to look at it, I think. Um, you know, there's when people leave your environment, you know, as influential as Teej was, obviously, that it does create real opportunities for other people um, and opportunities for us to maybe tweak a little bit of the way we do things. So I don't want to change anything massively. Mm -hmm. I want to build things and tweak things and get the, get the best out of areas where maybe we've been average in the past. So... Um, as far as our rugby's concerned, mate, we are really our coaches are, are you know got great detail. They they put everything out there as far as what we need to do to run rugby games. And we just got to keep building our environment, keep building the culture, keep building the belief of the boys around what we're about. And um, and we're we you know we're making strides. And uh, I think that's the little two or three percenters. And as you saw with our footy, I think at the back end of last year we grow, we got tighter and tighter, and we started to I suppose understand how to win big games and keep our composure and win those big moments that everyone talks about, but not just talk about them, really understand what that means as to how you do that. Um, and a lot of that comes back to how tight we are and how on the same page we are and how you think we want to game a footy. Someone like TJ, there would be a big part of, of that leadership and that yep. cultural element and, and that voice. So who are those newer voices maybe that are going to have to step up for the Hurricanes in 2021? Yeah, it's a good question. Or maybe maybe Colsey might have to step <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, we, we've still got we've got some really good 
but we've got some awesome people in there, some awesome young men in there. Um, we've still got our Reed Princeps and our Dane Coles and our James Blackwells who are sort of unsung heroes around our team, around what they provide during the week and in our environment, and, and that'll continue with those boys. But we just got to keep trying to grow that middle tier to come through, and we've got a real focus on how we grow leadership and how we grow those sorts of uh, those skills with our boys. So, you know, we've got the the young Duplicy coming through, yeah. Griffey, and, and guys who might be 22, 23, but are we're trying to you know encourage them to to be you know, good men and good leaders. So, um, I'm sure we'll be fine. We, um, you know, Colsey's, Colsey's still the absolute champion of leaders for us, mate. He's uh, an absolute rock in our environment. Um, you know, we still see, you know, there's the odd, odd time on the field where Colsey's, um, you know, passion takes over. <laughs> but, mate, I, he's... Um, You'd never want to get it out of him, though, would you? 100%. Yeah. 100%. And, and, mate, boys follow him, you know. So he's... Uh, having Colsey around our environment is just, just awesome for those young fellas to, to bounce off. You talked about sort of tweaks to your environment. What, what, what do you... Where are they and what, what do they look like? like uh, what, what does that hor uh, Hurricanes environment look like? Well, I think, I think one thing, and, mate, I, and uh, I'm, I'm probably got a lot of learning to do around our awareness around our cultural diversity. I think making sure that, like, we've always been tight and we're about to get that real yeah. tightness. I don't think, you know, we need to make sure that people feel, I don't know how to put this, that whatever gives them strength with what they do in their world or they can bring into our environment and be really comfortable and make us really strong. So we're talking about our Pacifica boys and, and making them, you know, helping them to really be themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we've put a lot of time into understanding and learning. And for a, you know, a guy that went away to Ireland for 13 years and came back and I've, I've got, you know, we've all got some learning to do, but we want to really grow those sort of, uh, those connections, I suppose, with, with all the boys. Is that something, and, and it would probably be a change from the start of your coaching here, and we're now seeing players who are quite comfortable to speak up on social issues and, and mm. to really embrace mm. their Māori or their Pacifica heritage, yep. which they haven't been able to. That must be mm. a, a balance for a coach to try and embrace as well and understand what they're doing, and also in the hope that their footy is, is still going where it needs to be as well. That's the key, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's awesome how we're putting themselves out there, and, and mate, I'm loving that. It's just understanding what's the best thing for you to keep doing as best, you know, the best thing for yourself and for the team. And if you, if you keep living by, you know, I'm not going to put any stuff out there that's going to affect this team, then I think we can. Mm. Mate, it's awesome how, you know, people are growing in confidence and they're throwing out what they think within reason. I think. Mm. Oh, okay, thank you. I will. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you were saying this. We were talking about some of the other coaches that you've worked with and, and through the Hurricanes in the last few years, John Plumtree, yep. Chris Boyd, uh, what sort of influence they have had and how you slotted in with their two different styles as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, between the two of them, Chris <laughs> Kim and Boyd and Plum. Um, yeah, no, mate, both awesome men. Um, Boyd, gave me the opportunity at the Canes, so, and, mate, that was awesome. And, um, yeah, Boyd's a... Interesting man, as he's so relaxed and chilled out. Which mate. people don't necessarily yeah. expect. I, oh, yeah, yeah, I was he's, surprised to hear the most chilled guy. Yeah, no, nah, pleasure, pleasure to work for. He's uh, yeah, nice and chilled out. He um, when you say chilled out, like just entrust you to do. Your, yeah, is that what you yep. mean by yeah. that? Oh, or not partly that, but partly. Rock what the, she'll you know, be right. <laughs> oh, she, a bit of she'll be right. But, you know, <laughs> Forty rocking with his shorts and his jandals on a Wellington day. <laughs> Sit back in his chair, and, and we're all the rest of us are <laughs> fretting about what's coming on the weekend. But uh, but at the end, mate, he gives you he gives you strength, and he gives you the ability to go in and t and you know run your part of the of the team or whatever, which was awesome for me. I, like he gave me, you know, trusted me pretty quickly around our attack after in two sixteen, and just sort of said, look, mate, I'll back you if you don't. He never really said to me, no, we're not doing that, which was awesome for me. And I sort of have to keep reminding myself that as a head coach now that you know, I'm going to back the boys as well. Um, and then Plum's, Plum's, um, yeah, loose unit as well, um, <laughs> but a top man as well. So uh, he's, he, uh, you know, really, I suppose in that last year when Plum took over as head coach, he sort of threw stuff at me and sort of gave me responsibility and made me sort out things that I thought maybe could have been head coach stuff, but he's, you know, he... He's quite smart. He's smarter than he looks on Plum and that he's trying to help me out to get better. <laughs> how, how was that? Was there any sort of um, conflict or a little um, healthy rivalry between the two of you? Because you obviously, I think, Razor had asked you to be part of his team for the All Blacks appointment and Plum had obviously thrown his hat in with 
Fozzie, any conversations in the Hurricanes <laughs> office around? <laughs> uh, uh, look, if I go, you're a, if you go, you know, you're gonna I'll have to fight. Here. Yeah, um, yeah, it was hard case. It was banter between like, you know, La Lara as well, uh, Plum's wife. It was, it was a funny story actually. We were in November last year, myself and my wife and Plum's wife went down to Queenstown and did the half marathon, and this was when it was all kicking off in November. And uh, we sat there, we run the half marathon, had a big night sitting at the cafe <laughs> here in Queenstown, and the, the banter around it, it was about, it got sorted about a week later, but we sort of knew which way it was going, but the banter was, yeah, no, we won't, we won't share too much of it, because Fozzie might be smart. <laughs> <laughs> what'd, you, what, what'd, you do, what'd you do the half in then? I actually uh, did it break two hours, which surprised well, me for a little, little fat round fella. <laughs> <laughs> they look pretty fit to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go, also going back to Chris Boyd as well. Did the two of you go to Cirque du Soleil yeah. in Ireland yeah. as a professional development? What, did, what was the? That's, uh, a, that's um, a hell of a junk. I'm, 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 pre I'm presuming you didn't go to do like the contortionist <laughs> thing or the trapeze stuff. We went and watched that. It was it was unbelievable. That was when uh, the Maldives played that game. Oh yeah, yeah. So we went to London and to a summit. So we listened to some speakers, which was okay. But then we went to um, went to Ireland for the for that game. But then we headed, it was in Montreal, the Cirque du Soleil. Where right. they, it's like where they have their pre-season. So they go there for 12 weeks and they practice all their shows and then they go around the world and do their shows. So we're watching how they're coaching them and, mate, it was unbelievable. They just got a whole block, um, about 15 massive big warehouses and it's practicing and we're watching them coach. It was gold. Towards the end of this, uh, the Super Rugby, uh, 2020 Super Rugby Aotearoa, um, Carlos Spencer left your, yep. your coaching group. Um, 2021, who's coming into that to fill that void? Have you made any um, decisions around that? No, not yet, not yet. Um, it's been a topic of conversation for a while around whether there was budget, yeah. like every conversation we have these days. Um, so we're working through that. We hope, we're hoping there's someone in that we can get somebody in there um, to do some skills and, and maybe attack, uh, help me with the attack. So I'm sort of in the stage where I love doing the, running the attack and, yeah. and it being my gig sort of thing, but by the same token, I understand I've got doing that takes up a hell of a lot of my time when yes. maybe I need to be looking a bit big picture. So we're hoping to get something sorted there. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, hope to get that. Was that the reason why that, that he, he left? Was this, you, you were enjoying, you were wanting to still be on the whistle no. and he, he didn't feel that he was? No, it wasn't, no, it was, it was purely, um, it was purely around COVID that. It was, it was purely around the, the, uh, the salary bill and, um, it made sense with me being, somebody had to go basically is what we were told, and with me being able to do the attack, um, CJ was doing the D, so, and we had a scrum coach and, a, and Gibbo doing the forwards, so uh, Lost got the short straw because I could probably do mm. parts of what he was doing. Yeah, okay. um, yeah so it was, it, was, it was tough, it was tough, felt for Lost. Yeah. When you look at, 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 I guess, your coaching path, it's probably been quite different to the other super coaches and the way you come through and your playing career as well very different so where do you sort of see yourself and in, 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 in as, as how you are as a coach at the moment and where you want to go um yeah if i can get my words out for a start that'd be good too <laughs> wouldn't it yeah look i'm uh, Swap chairs. i'm uh yeah i'm not sure i've I, I definitely know that i feel that i'm getting better every year and i'm learning something so that's that's a good start and that uh yeah, I suppose you have to, in this environment, you have to be open to learning and have that bit of growth. And yeah, and I definitely feel that, mate, I'm learning something every day, but the boys around me are making that really possible. So I'm loving the Canes. I'm loving, I'm loving Gibbo as my assistant coach. He's, um, he's a champion. He's a, he's a tough old school dude from footy, but with a really smart rugby head and he's, he's helping me out. But look, I, I, I love the Canes. I'm loving what I'm doing at the moment. I love the players and I, I get real job satisfaction and I've seen the boys get better or seeing someone get selected for the teams that have been selected in the last week or someone gets a call up to the ABs and you go, oh, awesome. Yeah. So that's the sort of, I've still got that in me. So that's, mate, that's easy to keep doing what I'm doing and trying to get better and, and helping. So that is the job satisfaction. So no real strong plans around where I want to be or what I want to do or where I want to end up. But um I suppose getting better and, and finding ways to, to get job satisfaction is probably what drives me. We touched on uh, TJ uh, earlier and, and what he meant to the Hurricanes and obviously he's going to be a huge loss for you guys this year, but you've lost two big names in Bowden Barrett and him in, in two years. Yep. Uh, now you've lost also potentially Jamie Booth for um, mm. quite a chunk of the season. Yep. How, how do you replace 
you know, experienced rugby heads like that, guys with leadership um, amongst a, a pretty young group, you can't just lean purely on Colsey, can you? No, that's right. And and that's the thing that uh, obviously the boys you mentioned, two pretty critical positions in the game of footy. Yeah. Mm. Um, so when when Bodie when Bodie went, everybody thought it was you know we're we're under the pump, and you know you just you work with the boys and you grow confidence and um, and both our tens this year, Jacko and uh, and Simon Hickey are going to be there are going to. I'm, I'm really confident in their ability to run a week and to, and to run a game plan and to run the game. Um, but it's all about confidence and giving guys, I think, giving them the answers as to if we get see this problem, this is how we're going to fix it or this is how we're going to play well, this is all you need to do. So I think it's um, really simplifying the game for these boys, uh, the nines and the tens. But, uh, you know, we've got some pretty good boys. You've got your nannies and you've got your Geordies and you've got your... You know your arties around them. Um, you said earlier it's an opportunity for these boys, and I'm looking forward to seeing that there's some pretty good heads there that just need a bit of time under the saddle. City to surf, <laughs> yeah, always. Yeah. A do you actually do you have a go at that? Surf to peak. Surf to peak. That's it. Um, that's the one. Yeah, uh, I did it the first year. It was a hard case because I was um, you, the bike, and then you run up the hill, and I'd gone pretty hard because it was my first year, and I was trying <laughs> to trying to be the man. So. Um, <laughs> Peter and Jensen was about, like, we were about 500 metres from the finish, and he was about 100 metres ahead of me, and you know, he was uh, battling, and I'm going for him, trying to get him up the hill, but I couldn't, I couldn't run, and I was walking, and the minute he'd be walking as well, and I was, just as I know he was about to turn around to see me, I'd just start running. <laughs> so he'd start running. So he'd start running. He, he ended up getting me by about 50 metres, but we still talk around that of, of, the, of peaking up the hill, but no, that's the last time I've done it try and encourage some other boys to do it. But yeah, it's a bit, uh, we used to do it as the last thing we did before Christmas, yeah. but now it's a bit different. Obviously we come in in January, so yeah, we've found a space there. On the, <laughs> yeah, the good stuff. Yeah. But she's you want a real, a, bl a southerly blowing. Oh, mate. Yeah, is that what you want, <laughs> yeah. like a real howler? The big boys are in. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> Sam Lousy no. coming around, he could hardly ride a bike with his legs out. And <laughs> oh, it's so good. Just about going backwards. I want to talk about your coaching team again, and one guy that um, I'd like to talk about is, in his development is Corey Jane. Yep. Like, uh, another guy that um, I've done a bit of work with, and he's a, yep. a real hard cash rooster, and we've all seen him um, in the All Blacks environment. Funny guy. Mm -hmm. Like... Probably people probably didn't realise that coaching was the pathway he was going to take. Can you sort of give us a little bit of background to his well, one coaching ability and, and how he's changed from that? Because yeah. it's it's happened quite quickly, not the yep. natural path again. He's gone out of playing. I think it was maybe three yeah. years ago. Yep. Straight into a coaching environment. Yeah, and the things you've mentioned there are things I challenged them on when we first sat down to talk about whether he'd do whether he'd come on board with us, and. Mate, Siege has got an awesome rugby brain, especially defensively. Um, so in his last couple of years playing, he got by. His legs didn't move that fast, <laughs> but he got by on the fact that he was smart yeah, and getting yeah. to the right spots and he was picking things off and turning teams in because he would get in the right spots. So yeah. um, his transfer of knowledge to the boys has been awesome. He's um, the big thing we talked around having that growth mindset and he's 100% wants feedback, takes things on, changes the behaviour. If he if he you know he gets feedback that he can do something better, he'll do it. And mate, he's gone through the roof around his, yeah, his development around that. And I know mate, the, the the thing that we love is that it's really driven to get things right, but mate, we can relax and, and have some fun with Siege as well. Oh, good stuff. Speaking of relax, tight five. Here we go. Yeah, right. Yeah, so we've got, yeah, I've got yeah, five, maybe six questions. I'll probably throw in a supplementary. But we want honest answers, and okay. off the top of your head, don't okay. think about it. Right. Razor did give us very uh, good honest answers. Yep. So, um, sort of. Yeah. Hurricanes young star that we've got to look, look out for in 2021? Ruben Love. Um, player who is uh, your teacher's pet at the Hurricanes or who you love? Oh, i got to be honest. Nani, your fave. Probably. Nani probably. <laughs> <Nance>. <laughs> um, one thing you do at home that you'd never tell the boys at work about? Uh, Jesus, what do I do at home? Oh, you don't do anything? Um, <laughs> I don't think I do at home. Shit, I don't know. Um, I'm so honest with them. I tell them everything. <laughs> oh. Uh, maybe we should. Maybe we should ask your wife yeah. that one. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll leave that one. You don't do it. Well, we'll just put. It doesn't do anything Nothing at home. At Nothing home. at home. Yeah. yeah. It just sleeps. Um, one thing you want to achieve um, in rugby that you haven't yet. Uh, win as a super, win as a head coach. Win a, win a championship as a head coach. Um, if the Canes can't win this year, who do you want to win? Uh, Munster. 
<laughs> no. no. Oh, oh. Go on. Go if on. If the Canes can't win, who do I want to win? OK. Um... The Landers. Oh, yes. Oh, that's two. Yes, um, all right, you've got... You've come up... Your contract's come up and you've got two offers on the table. Yeah. You've got Munster and the Canes. Um, both paying huge overs. <laughs> <laughs> who are you taking? Uh... I'm taking Keynes in 2021 and Munster in 2025. <laughs> <laughs> Very political, well done. Oh, Thanks, Jason Jace. Holland, thank you so much for joining us. That was The Conversation. You can download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts from. Of course, follow us on Sky Sports Presents, all the social media pages as well, and stay with us on Sky Sport for more of The Conversation.